One of my favorite New Caledonian gecko species are the mossy prehensile tailed geckos. These guys have a huge array of patterns and colors and they're one of the most visually appealing geckos in the world. In this video, we're gonna talk about their care, size, their everything that you need to know to keep one of these guys as a pet. So the mossy prehensile tailed gecko is the third largest species of geckos of New Caledonia. They're also known as Chihua or Minara gecko Chihua, that's their scientific name. Most people refer to them as Chihua or Chihua gecko. Their common name is the mossy prehensile tailed gecko. Obviously they have crazy mossy patterns that they use to blend in right in with their you know environment the bark and the trees and, and all that good stuff they're very very active especially during the nighttime they're nocturnal like all the other new caledonian gecko species i see that these guys are out moving they're like all always exercising or moving around a lot more than like let's say a gargoyle gecko or a lychee so for that reason i really like these guys Another cool fact about the Chihuahuas is that they're heavy, heavy hunters. They're the best hunters out of all the New Caledonian geckos. They are like little snipers. They will actively look for crickets or bugs and their accuracy is unlike any other of the New Caledonian geckos. I did say they are the third largest species of New Caledonian geckos. These guys come in two different localities. There's actually three or four localities, but for the most part, you're gonna hear about two localities. The Pine Island, like these guys here, which is the biggest locality, or the mainland, which is another locality that's very popular, but they don't get as big as these. The Pine Island Chihuahuas will get anywhere from 60 to 85, even 90 grams at times. They will reach anywhere from 10 to 11 inches long. The Pine Island tend to be the biggest of the two localities. And in my opinion, it's the better looking, has the most colors and they have that white collar that we love from the Chihuahuas. I will say though, the mainland seem to come in brighter reds. It's not very easy to find bright red mainland Chihuahuas. So a lot of people go with the Pine Islands. Now, when it comes to pricing, there is an upside and a downside to the Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas are some of the most expensive New Caledonian geckos, and that is because they are very hard to reproduce. They breed easily, but their eggs have a low hatch rate for whatever reason. A lot of people think it's because the eggs do get to be over calcified, so babies a lot of times have a hard time breaking the egg open, and they don't put out as many eggs as crested or gargoyle geckos. But with that said, they're still one of the most beautiful animals. And when it comes to having their whole environment set up, their whole habitat set up, it's going to cost you basically the same that it would cost you for a crested gecko. So the upfront cost for the environment and the enclosure is not gonna be very high. You could spend anywhere from, you know, $100 up to like two, $300 if you wanna make it a really over the top nice enclosure, like if you wanna go live planted enclosure. If you wanna keep it simple you could even have an enclosure for as low as like 30 to 50 bucks if you're talking about paper towels egg crates and fake plants the animal itself is going to be a little bit pricier oddly enough though at the time of this video the prices of chihuahua have kind of gone down a little bit so it is the best time to buy them but a pine island chihuahua Typically, you're not gonna find babies any lower than $450. That's probably the absolute lowest you will find Pine Island Chihuahua babies. And the mainlands typically are a little bit less expensive. I've seen babies for around 350. These prices could go all the way up depending on the colors and the patterns. An animal like this as a baby is going to cost you easily like $1,500. And fun fact, the most expensive gecko I have ever heard sell to somebody else in a private cell has been a Chihuahua and that was for $40,000. Believe it or not, I know this to be a fact and I know the person who sold this animal and it is mind blowing that somebody is willing to pay that much for an animal which I think is absolutely gorgeous but I just don't have that kind of money to spend on a gecko. Anyways, I thought that was pretty cool and now let's get over to the enclosure so I can show you how we keep them. <laughs> All right, so um, with Chihuahuas, you want to keep them very similar to the New Caledonian species. We keep our geckos in tubs, but there are a lot of people that do very well 
keeping them in vivariums, glass vivariums, you know, with the UV on top. A lot of people actually recommend adding UV and even a small wattage heat lamp to their enclosures. I personally don't, I've never had to, I've never had any issues and I've kept Chih Chihuahuas for over a decade but some people swear by it some people like to do it so depending on what type of enclosure and what type of environment you want to give your animal you could do so as well anytime that you're giving uvb though for an animal like this that's from the rainforest you're going to want to give them a 5.0 uvb and you're going to want to give them a lot of shade and, and plenty of room to hide from the uvb if it wants to the heat bulb if you are going to add a heat bulb i would say make sure that the hot spot doesn't go anywhere over 90 degrees especially if they're babies i wouldn't even provide any heat whatsoever when they're adults they can handle 85 90 degrees if they have somewhere to escape the heat and as long as the humidity is properly set for an animal though if you're going to keep it the same exact way that we keep them we basically provide a lot of visual barriers like we do with all of our geckos. We give them a lot of plants and a lot of cork bark for them to climb on. You gotta remember that when you are setting up an enclosure for an arboreal gecko, you want a taller enclosure, but it serves you no purpose to have a taller enclosure and a bunch of sticks at the bottom. You gotta fill that whole thing up so you take advantage of the volume. Here, as you can see on this enclosure, we have some plants, we have some cork grounds. They could hide inside the cork grounds if they want to. For the substrate, you could use anything that holds the humidity well, like mulch, sphagnum moss, works great. Some people like to use paper towels. You just gotta be aware of that humidity a lot better. Now, the humidity for this, guys, are going to be anywhere from 60 to 80%, and that's gonna be the average where you wanna keep it throughout the whole time. If it drops, you know, occasionally to 50% is not a big deal, your gecko's not gonna die, but you wanna make sure that the majority of the time, the humidity is between 60 and 80%. 75%, 80% being the best. That's going to provide the best ambient for your animals, their skin, that's going to keep them healthy. Now, as far as the enclosure goes, we wanna make sure you give them a nice big water bowl. They do drink water out of the water bowl. And as far as feeding goes, we do feed them the Crested Gecko diet. It's good, bro. Like any of the other New Caledonian species, but it is very important with this particular species that you do feed insects at least twice a week. We feed crickets or superworms for these guys and they go bonkers for them. Like I mentioned earlier, these guys are the best hunters out of all the New Caledonian species, so you have to provide those insects. The females in particular, if you're breeding them, they're gonna require a lot of supplementation, a lot of extra fat and protein from those insects, so you gotta make sure you're sprinkling that calcium on your crickets um, every time you feed. Now the ambient temperature for New Caledonian geckos is going to be in the 70s. That it works more than perfect for these guys. This room stays about 75 to 78 degrees throughout the year. So that's going to be the average. They could handle the, the temperature drops of 60s and they could even go into the 50s for a couple days if they had to. But obviously you wanna keep it in that average range of 75 to 78 degrees. That's when they do the best. If you're in an area that it gets a little bit colder than it does here in Florida and your ambient temperature is going to go all the way down to the 60s for the majority of the year or even like six months or four or five months, you could add a heat pad in the enclosure and that's going to bump up the, the, the heat without having so much an effect of the humidity. If you do add lights though, that does tend to dry up the enclosure. So maybe try to add a humid hide or just have a humidifier going in the room for them. When it comes to Chihuahua, one of the most sought after animals are going to be the ones that have a collar. Some have more of a green collar, some have more of a white collar. This girl has kind of like in between, it's a little bit more green than nothing. This Chihuahua here, this is also a pine island, they're both pine islands, but this guy here, when he fires up, he gets a lot of reds and greens, which is very attractive, but people go absolutely crazy for the ones that have the white collar. Now, personally, I like the high reds better. You know, it's it depends on your taste. 
These are both beautiful animals. So what I'm trying to do with this pair, for example, is get that bright red color that he fires up into with that nice white or green collar. Hopefully I get to do that with this pair. And uh, looks like these guys want to go back in home. Whoa, bro. So take a look at this little guy here. This is a baby Pine Island Chihuahua. Now it's kind of frustrating because Chihuahuas actually have the longest ugly duckling stage of any of the other geckos we work with. These guys will be kind of like a bland brown or tan color up until like eight to 10 months and then they start to really show their really true adult colors. But it's hard because it's hard to decide what you wanna hold back. It's sometimes hard to know how to price certain animals because as babies, they all look pretty similar. Unless they have like a bright white collar or something that makes them stick out. If you're breeding for just like reds and greens, it's gonna be hard to decide what animals have the best color because they all have this crazy little, you know, ugly color when they're babies. Just thought that was cool. The metamorphosis that they go through uh, of the color change is insane. And as they start to grow up, don't worry, your Chihuahua isn't gonna look brown for the rest of its life. It takes a lot longer for it to look like those adult animals than let's say a crested gecko or a gargoyle gecko to show their colors. I mean, you felt that, you did it. There you go. Dude, that's a hot potato. Man. Takes a freaking little bit for him to chill out. All right, guys, that about wraps it up on the care for these guys. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I don't think I missed anything, but like I said, these guys are pretty simple to take care of. If you get past the, the initial starting price point, taking care of them is very cheap and affordable and they are some of the smartest and most intriguing New Caledonian gecko species in the world.